Good evening, and welcome to Body and Soul Awareness with Stephanie and Oksana. Here are your hosts. Hello, everyone. This is Stephanie. Um, Oksana will not be with us this evening, but I do have a very special guest that will be joining us a little bit later, or joining me a little bit later. Um, So I just wanted to say that I hope everyone is having a great new year so far. Last week we talked about the fact that last um, year, 2016, was the end of a nine-year cycle and that this year not only was it a one year, but it was the beginning of a brand new cycle. So it was definitely a time to um, go ahead and set your goals, um, meditate, get an idea of what your intentions are for the year, and just put some effort and energy into focusing on that so you can attain the things that you want, kind of making sure that all the seeds that you wanted to be planted were planted because everything is going full force for sure this year. Um, And I hope in a good direction for everyone else as well because I know it is for me. Um, But your homework last week was to uh, set your goals and actually put some intention into um, into what your goals were. Really make sure that you were focused on your goals, that they were measurable goals, they were specific goals, they were time, time-bound time goals, um, <clears throat> and something that really meant something to you. So you're actually getting a lot of benefit out of it. And hopefully everybody did that. Um, I spent a lot of time working on that actually leading up to um, leading up to the end of the year and into the new year just because um, I'm in a serious transition time right now. Everything's going really well. Um, I can definitely see, um, see like, the silver lining of everything, but, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> I have a little allergy, like, dust or something in the room, but... Um, I can definitely see the silver lining for everything, and it's really beautiful because it's funny. I always describe to my clients and people that I talk to that life is kind of like a roller coaster, right? So sometimes you're up high at the peak of the roller coaster, and then you fall down, right? And when you get down kind of at the bottom of the roller coaster, then you go right back up again, right? It's kind of the cycle of life. It's always ups and downs ebb and flow of life, whatever you want to call it. But um, so I'm finally seeing myself coming out of kind of the last dip. So we're on our way up the hill. So it's a wonderful thing. But it's interesting being able to kind of look at, look, we'll look back at things that have happened and occurred and realize that everyone or everything is kind of coming around full circle the way that it should be so things can be the way that they need to be so we can or so I can personally move forward and I know for a lot of other people um, a lot of things are falling away from them that they didn't need that were no longer serving them so they could move forward and step into their personal power because right now is really a time for that so that's why um, the homework was so important um, last week to make sure that you have really specific goals so you know what you want. So once you know what you want, there's nothing stopping you from getting it. You just go for it, right? You just focus on what you want, and then the practical steps will all line up. You do what you need to, and things will work out the way that they're supposed to, and you'll be um, you'll be living the life of your dreams <laughs> or your soul's purpose, more importantly. So um, anyways, Uh, Hopefully everybody did their homework, and if it was possible for you to do it on the first, it was a really good day because it was a 1-1-1 day, which was a gateway, and the universe was listening to any of your desires and goals and dreams that you put out into into the universe. So if you were listening or if you would put them out, the universe was listening, and hopefully everything will fall into place for you. So um, anyways... Our special guest will be on uh, in a little bit. So until she gets on the air, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about tonight's topic, which is um, being vegan, right? I know that's something that a lot of people have heard about. It's one of those things that's 
definitely out there. You can Google it. You can get a lot of information for it. There's vegan restaurants you can eat at. There's a whole bunch of vegan recipes online. There's so many different eating options now. I mean, geez, there's gluten-free. There's, um, um, there's paleo diets. There's, <clears throat> there's all of these different, um, different ways kind of to eat. And veganism is definitely something that's been around um, for a really long time. I don't have a lot of background information on it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the aspects of veganism that I know about, and then also um, kind of I wanted to uh, read this article for you just to kind of um, give you an idea of what veganism is and um, vegetarianism and if they're good for you um, and possible benefits of them. So. There have been a lot of studies done that show that there are a lot of advantages that are associated with eating like this. So you're going to obviously have a lower body mass index if you're eating just a lot of fruits, vegetables, grains, seeds, legumes. And this is because, um, um, hold on a second. It's not as hard for your body to digest these things as it is the meat. And meat tends to get stuck inside of you, and that's why you tend to have more weight. On top of the fact that meat has a lot of toxins in it as well, and when you ingest a lot of toxins, your body tends to hold on to more fat because it needs a place to store those toxins as well. Um, another benefit is uh, you're going to have lower blood pressure. Uh, you're going to have a reduced risk of heart disease, um, other diseases like diabetes, um, really, really big one, cancer, um, and you're probably going to live a longer life because you're not going to get diseases like this, right? You're going to be, a, ten, you tend to be a lot healthier if you are um, eating via these lifestyles. And what I mean um, by these lifestyles are there's a few different kinds, right? So there's not just a vegetarian and a vegan. There's like all these kind of in-between things. So um, this, this is just one kind of example of them, and I'm sure there's, like, tons of other ones that you could find online if you look it up. But um, there's semi-vegetarians, and semi-vegetarians still eat meat. And this is actually, it's funny, because this is what I used to consider myself in the beginning. Um, I considered myself a vegetarian, but every once in a while I'd eat chicken and I'd eat fish, right? But I wouldn't eat... Um, any red meat, I wouldn't eat pork, I didn't eat other kinds of fowl, like I didn't eat duck, I didn't eat turkey, things like that. So that's kind of where I started in my journey. Um, and that was actually like for years and years and years, I didn't really eat a lot of red meat. That was probably since I was, I don't know, early 20s. I haven't eaten a lot of red meat. Um, but definitely chicken and fish were part of my diet. Um, and then I skipped to being a pescatarian, which is where you avoid meat and poultry, but you still eat fish and you also incorporate seafood into your diet. So like for me, prime example of seafood was salmon. It's one of my favorite kinds of fish, which I still recommend as long as you can get wild caught salmon and make sure it's wild caught make sure it's not um, farm raised because if it's farm raised it's terrible for you and I actually saw this thing online I forget where it was um, exactly but I saw it but it was talking all about how the <clears throat> sorry how all the farm raised salmon they actually inject them with a red dye of some sort to make them look pink because they're actually like gray because of the food that they eat. So they're not really the kind of salmon that's giving you any benefit. Like you're not getting all the omega-3s that you think you're getting from it. But um, so I was, um, I was a pescatarian. Actually, right now I would consider myself a pescatarian because I still do eat um, shrimp and I'll eat crabs occasionally. What else do I eat? I eat sushi sometimes, um, and then, like I said, salmon. Um, but for the most part, outside of that, I don't eat any meat. Um, no chicken, no beef, no 
core, none of it. At this point, actually, it makes me sick to my stomach because I haven't eaten it in so long. Um, so then there's also um, a lacto-ovo vegetarian. <clears throat> and a lacto-ovo vegetarian is someone who totally doesn't eat meat, totally doesn't eat any fish, no chicken, no poultry, but they do still eat dairy and eggs. Now, I used to actually eat dairy, and I occasionally now will still eat eggs. Like if I go to the farm where that egg has been, um, or where the egg has been not hatched but laid, right, um, just because any factory eggs I know are going to be bad for me just because of all the hormones and stuff that they put into those poor chickens. I feel really bad for them. Um, but outside of that, when it comes to dairy, I've always been kind of I'm kind of leery on dairy. Like I loved it. I love cheese. Um, I used to love skim milk. That's what I drank because um, it was low fat, right? And I wanted to stay trim. And all you had to do is like watch out and make sure you like ate stuff that said no sugar and low fat, and then you would be skinny, right? That's how I used to think a long time ago before I got smart. Um, and so. Now my problem with dairy is, A, um, I am still breastfeeding, and my son is highly allergic to cow's milk. So if I drink any dairy or eat anything with dairy in it, even if I have a latte with dairy in it, um, he has a reaction, and his skin actually breaks out, and he gets eczema. Um, and I decided that it's more important that my son be healthy than I eat dairy, right? And then it's actually good for me, too, because with the dairy, um, or with him being allergic to the dairy, then I now cannot eat the dairy, which makes it so much easier kind of for me to transition out of eating dairy. Now, one of the reasons that I don't, or the main reason that I don't like dairy is because the majority of the people do not drink or eat, um, when, when I say eat like cheese, um, raw milk right? Because everything has to be pasteurized. It's kind of like a law that everything be pasteurized and the pasteurization process heats up the milk and it kills all the enzymes. And then therefore it makes it to where your stomach or your body can't digest it. So you're not really getting the benefit of it. Um, so it's not very good for you anyways. Even though they say like you're supposed to drink milk and they have that whole like got milk campaign and they had, um, Remember, they had the milk mustaches all over their faces, and they did this whole campaign with all these celebrities about got milk. Um, anyways, so lots of ova vegetarian, that's what that is. And then we have vegans. So vegans live a solely plant-based life um, when it comes to their diet, um, and that's considered one of the strictest forms of vegetarianism. And you eat no animal products at all, and you have no eggs and no dairy. So, and then also, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll have to ask our special guest um, when she gets on, but if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, let me see, da -da. Um, vegans also cannot wear any animal products, and they can't use anything that's an animal product. Like, vegans cannot use honey because um, that comes from bees, right? So you're not allowed to use that. Um, your shoes can't have leather. Your, like, you can't have a leather purse. You can't have a fur coat, things like that, when it comes, are really big with them. Um, because there's also the kind of ethical part of it. It's not just oh, it's not healthy for me to eat those meats because the energy of those animals goes into me when I eat them. And it's not a good energy because of the life that they live, the food that they were fed, and the way that they were killed and the process that it takes to get to my plate and then into my stomach. Um, so there's that aspect, kind of the energetic aspect of it. But then there's also the ethical aspect of it where it's not necessarily right to mass produce all of these animals just to simply 
um, just to simply have a fat society. And seriously, like, not even fat. I mean, unhealthy, overweight. You see it everywhere. Like, everyone has excess baggage around their waistline. And what that means is you're not really healthy. Um, And the reason that I can say that is because I've studied the body and I understand kind of how it works. So when you have extra fat around your midsection, that means that you're unhealthy. And it's something that you need to definitely work on because it does a lot for your heart health and your overall health as well. So it's really important to make sure um, to make sure that you pay attention to your body, um, and then you'll just feel better. You'll have more energy. You'll move better, um, and that's definitely what I've noticed since I changed my diet. And like I said, I'm not 100% vegan or vegetarian. Even I would put myself in a pescatarian bracket if I actually was one person or was I the kind of person to put myself into brackets or under titles. I hate titles and labels. But if I were to, it would be a pescatarian. And I can definitely tell how I feel better, right? I have so much more energy after I eat a big, huge salad than after I used to eat a hamburger or a piece of meat of any kind for that matter. Um, Even if it was a piece of baked chicken, I would always feel tired and, like, lack energy. But now when I eat salads, when I juice, when I um, eat smoothies, when I just, even if I just pick up an apple and eat it, like I feel so much better than if I did, um, than if I was eating as I had before. Because my diet, it's funny because I thought I was really fairly healthy, at least considered like, or compared to most people. But when I look at it, I was so unhealthy, so I was so confused. And I think that's a really big part kind of of my learning process is I had to realize, like, how confused I was about eating and how, how kind of, like, our bodies work and how our bodies respond to different foods and how those different foods um, assist our body or hurt our body. So I think that was a really, um, was a really good kind of like learning lesson in my journey was that I just, I knew nothing. I knew nothing. And I thought I knew so much. So I've done lots and lots of studying so I can um, kind of, kind of just learn how exactly it all works. Right. Um, Because there's so much to know, especially when all they tell you is basic stuff and eat off this like really antiquated old food pyramid that's not good for anyone when the majority of it is wheat, and wheat is one of the most gmo foods out there. So um, that is a little bit of information about different kinds of vegetarians, a little bit of background of where I was and where I'm at now as far as my eating is concerned. Um, I wanted to go over a few um Um, A few things, because one of the things that I hear all the time from people is, um, how are you getting all of your nutrients, right? Because meat has been slammed into everybody's head as such a huge source or um, the best way to get all of these nutrients. Well, I wanted to give you a few vegan examples of the nutrients that, the nutrients that, um, or sorry, a few vegan examples of foods that you can get all of the nutrients that you could ever need and even more than um, eating meat. And meat is so hard, so much harder on your system than any of the greens for sure. But anyways, so protein is probably the number one thing that I hear from people. Like, how are you getting your protein? Well, spirulina is a blue-green algae, and it has tons and tons of protein. It has more protein than meat. Um, and it gives you high levels of energy, and there's so many different benefits to spirulina. It's got kind of like a fishy or not even really fishy, but like an oceany taste to it. So I usually put my powder into a smoothie with berries, so I'm not having to taste the taste of the spirulina quite so much, but it's really, really good for you. And then spirulina is also really high in iron as well. Um, And then the next thing I hear is omega-3. Like how if you're not eating any meat or fish are you getting your omega-3s? Well, T3 
chia seeds have over eight times more omega-3 than salmon, and they're really good um, for energy as well. And the Aztecs used to, or in the Aztec language, chia seed actually means strength. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, next is calcium. Everybody's like, so if you're not drinking milk, how are you getting calcium? Well, I already told you how I feel about dairy and the pasteurization process and how bad it is for you, you unless it's raw. So, but a few examples of vegan options to get calcium are arugula. And arugula is so yummy. It's kind of like this peppery green. And I love arugula. Like, I mix it with salad. I put it... Um, um, sometimes I saute it just the tiniest bit just to let it will. Sometimes I, um, I'll put it on a sandwich. I love it. It's amazing. Um, and then it also has six times more calcium than milk. And watercress is another good example. And then dark leafy greens um, in general usually have a lot of calcium in them. So you want to eat a lot of those. They're really good for you. Um, iron is the next thing on my list, and then um, you can get iron from spinach, and you get more iron from spinach than you do from beef, and spinach um, is really a really good source. Like, if you remember Popeye, he always used to eat his spinach, and he would get stronger, um, but our bodies need iron, and it needs iron so it can transport oxygen um, to our cells. And then last but not least is magnesium. Magnesium is a really important um, mineral that our body needs. And for everyone that likes chocolate, this is a good thing because as long as you're consuming 70% or more cacao in your cho dark chocolate, then you can have kind of, well, don't overdo it, obviously, nothing or everything in moderation. Um, but dark chocolate is a really, really good source of magnesium, and magnesium helps to calm the nerves. So anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a few of my favorite kind of vegan sources of a lot of the vitamins and minerals that our body needs that um, a lot of people think that you absolutely have to eat meat to have, and there's some proof that you don't. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go to commercial break, and I will be back with you shortly. Solutions to delusions. How do you do this? Well, join me every Friday night on the Delusion Solution radio show from 6 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time and 9 to 12 midnight Eastern Time right here on the Freedomizer Network, where we will be discussing and discerning the times by making sense of current events and bringing to light much-needed topics. Our calling number is 347-324-3704 to listen in. Watching with your ears and listen with your eyes. I'm your host, Tara Dawn, and I'll see you there. Vaccines are required for students, employees, immigrants, military members, and international travel. Do you know how to legally avoid them? This is vaccine rights attorney and Freedomizer radio host, Alan Phillips. My vaccine exemption ebook can help you avoid the mistakes that have cost others their exemption rights. Get the authoritative guide to vaccine legal exemptions, an ebook available at freedomizerradio.com and vaccinerights.com. Let freedom read. How would you like to make your work more enjoyable, be more creative and relaxed, all while sitting at your desk? That's exactly what my Serenity Rug has done for me. This revolutionary footrest, I can't even call it a footrest, because this thing encourages movement of your feet, which results in more blood flow. While traditional footrests advocate the motionless placement of your feet, I found that I'm unconsciously digging my feet into the long, soft grass strands of the Serenity Rug. 
It delivers an incredibly relaxing sensation that closely resembles the feeling of an exotic foot massage. If you have ever had a foot massage that made you want to stay there for hours, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not heard about the Serenity Rug, check them out at serenityrug.com and join the exclusive Serenity Rug community and enjoy a feeling of comfort and relaxation that most will never experience. They've sold out before, so I suggest you do your feet a favor and grab one of these. Again, that's serenityrug.com. All right, everyone, we're back on the air. Um, So I want to go ahead and introduce tonight's special guest. Sky Juice is a natural food chef, doula, nutritional consultant, natural lifestyle, and business coach. She has nearly 20 years' experience in the holistic health field, including nutritional and herbal counseling, natural birthing and parenting, managing and owning several vegan cafe and juice bars, and a catering business in Baltimore, Maryland the Yaba Pot, and in Puerto Rico, Paradise Wellness, where she hosts healing and detoxification retreats and programs and the Roots and Fruits Cafe, and a host of other healing services. She has traveled to the world's premier wellness centers, Hippocrates Health Institute, Tree of Life, and Wigmore Institute, and continues to study in the areas of detoxification, nutrition, and self-empowerment. She has led numerous healthy living workshops at the Pont School of Medicine, University of D.C., and other locations of distinction. Recently, Sky created a nonprofit organization called the Movete Puerto Rico, Inc., and obtained 80 acres of farmland through a land grant from the Department of Agriculture. Her next quest is the development of the Luquillo Farm Sanctuary and its various programs. In addition, Sky Juice, who is highly intuitive, is a mother of five busy vegetarian children, all delivered naturally, breastfed, and unvaccinated. These rich life experiences, combined with her background in holistic health and business building, makes her an abundant source of powerful guidance and healing to assist others in adopting a natural, healthy, and abundant lifestyle. She is considered by many to be one of the most passionate wellness and empowerment connoisseurs of our younger generations. And I am very, very grateful to be introducing Miss Sky Juice. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How is everything? You know, it's wonderful. We're actually having a 70-degree day here. It's been a little chilly the past few days. It's been like in 60s. 65 range. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I live in the 80s. <laughs> oh, I know. Where you're in Puerto Rico, right? Exactly. Oh, must be exactly. you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just dodged a bullet because apparently it's um, snowing in Virginia where I used to live. So I'm glad I'm in Southern California now. <laughs> right? Exactly. But it's yeah, but I'm so excited to have you on the air tonight. It's it's so amazing because, like, I love hearing about, like, women that um, do things naturally. And, like, I had my son at home, and it was such an empowering experience. And I had a midwife and a doula. And I just, um, I kind of love, like, everything that you're about. So if you could, we got a good background um, about you. But can you tell us, like, a little bit about how you kind of started your natural journey and like when you started and how it worked for you um, and how you got to where you are today. Wow. So um, I started, I've been in the restaurant industry my whole life. My mother had a restaurant, a seafood restaurant when I was growing up. And then Uh all of my jobs have been in restaurant, either from bartending to serving to um, short order, something dealing with the restaurant industry, something in the front of the house, back of the house. I've actually done the books, the ordering. So I learned about the business not only from growing up but other jobs, other other employers. But I never worked in natural food, and I was so interested in eating vegetarian, vegan. I had been vegan for, uh, well, at this point now, it's 30 years. So, but all these jobs I've had never, it was never in the type of food that I ate. So 
Um, I was working in a nonprofit organization and decided to start a catering company from home. And I uh, created a menu of things that I like to eat personally and things that I knew I could make well. And I made one of those old-fashioned, um, I don't know if you remember that program back in the day, print shop, um, awful uh, program. I made a flyer, and I printed <laughs> yeah. it. And you, you remember print shop, right? I do, and I do. I made a flyer. I made a flyer, and I posted it in health food stores and grocery stores in Baltimore, and basically that was the beginning of my business, and people actually called me, and I was actually started with delivery, making meals and delivering it to folks, and then um, I got hired by this really cool hippie couple living in a school bus to cater their (laughs) wedding. Nice. Which was my biggest job ever in life that I was totally unprepared for. But um, I, it was like a, a 150 people, and I only charged oh, them wow. $5,000. But it was a big oh. deal to me, and I, I probably spent more than I should, but I actually made a little profit. And I took that money and rented a location and found a little tiny old pizza shop and and rented it and started building it out for like eight months until I could wow. actually open up, and I literally built it from scratch because I had no I had no money no funding, I literally like cook something go to a poetry jam <laughs> sell maybe a hundred dollars worth of food, the next day go buy some tiles, you know like that's how it right. was it was like pieced together. I finally opened my restaurant in Baltimore back in 2002, and it was like the first 100% vegan place in the area, and it blew up like quickly. In a few months, I was making like 10000 in a month, which was the most money I've ever made, and, uh, and it grew and grew and grew from there. And then, um, then what happened? Uh, I expanded, opened another location, so I had two locations. That got really difficult, closed that, uh, reopened a second location. Anyway, long story short, right. it just grew and it was it was amazing and then I was and then it burnt me out completely. So okay. I sold everything, moved to Puerto Rico and um been here for about seven years. Yeah, uh, not a bad place. Oh, now yeah, what, Puerto Rico um, is awesome. What made you choose Puerto Rico? Do you have Puerto Rican background, or was it just kind of a soul calling, or both? No Puerto Rican background at all. I don't have any family here, um, and I didn't even know anybody here that lived here at all. Um, it was just you know, like you just throw a dart at the at the uh, map, and and wherever it hits, you kind of like. See, see if that's the place for you. So that's basically right. what happened. And came here with, you know, hopes and dreams of just living that, that island life, that sunshine everyday life, beach life, and, and recreating Beautiful. something over here. And that's basically what, what I've done. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's something that me and Asana have definitely been working on is just trying to get to a place that's kind of more conducive to what we do, and that's why I ended up on the West Coast because the D.C. metro area wasn't working for me anymore. (laughs) Exactly. And so basically um, that's what I'm doing over here now. Beautiful. So, um, okay, so tell us uh, a little bit more about what it is that you do Um, I know you run uh, wellness and detox retreats, but tell us a little bit more about that and how you help women with your gifts. So the retreats, I've been doing retreats since before I even got here. Before I moved here, I actually had a retreat, um, and I've just been doing them monthly now for uh, the last seven years. And Mm -hmm. they are raw vegan retreats with coconut water, juicing, uh, green smoothies. And I also put in excursions with going to the rainforest, the beach, 
Um, nice. I have a yoga instructor who does yoga on the beach. Um, we go hiking oh, up in the rainforest that. to the river. So it's a real, it's like a full package. And then if someone wants like colonics or a massage and those types of things, that can be added to the the program. And um, yeah. I have a place here that hosts, I can get about five people, five to six people upstairs. Okay. So I have the accommodations already and um we also do like uh education so folks who are really trying to learn how to eat this way and right. you know incorporate more raw food into their life i don't necessarily think you have to be 100 percent raw but i think you should be high raw you know like as much right. raw raw food in your diet as you can um yeah. what I always say, what like, at a minimum, for me, like, I tell my clients, like, at a minimum, like, 60% raw versus 40% yeah, cooked. If, you, if that's, like, the absolute least you can do, that's what you need to do to maintain, like, at least yeah. decent health. Yep, yep, yep. So, basically, that is what I do um, on a monthly basis. On a daily basis, I do a vegan meal delivery I had a cafe here for a couple years, and I closed it because I actually started traveling. So I didn't really want to come back and get locked into a restaurant. So I decided to do a uh, uh, meals, meals on Wheels. So I, I cook uh, vegan and prepare raw food, and I have clients who I deliver it to, like a delivery service. And that's what right. I do on a week on a weekly basis. I only do that twice a week. And that's it. That's basically, you know, working on the farm project, which is um, still in development. And that's, and what, that's that what's going on over here. So, and the farm project is the farm project is a nonprofit organization um, to create a sustainable educational farm to really teach Mm -hmm. children, primarily children, how to, well, not only how, but just to appreciate the fact that food, this is where our food comes from. Because Puerto Rico, unfortunately, which is a super fertile country, where this place is green everywhere, we only grow uh, 15% of what we consume. And everything wow. else is imported. Everything else is imported, what? and everything is super expensive. Food is super okay. expensive here. So, right. um, you know, so that's why, like, getting back to an agricultural country is the goal because you can't have a sustainable society that depends on its food coming off of a ship, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So that, I mean, I even that's the goal of that project. Here, I even say that for us here, like, in cities. Like, we can't feed ourselves. Farms are at exactly. least, what, like, three, four hours away. If something happens, what are we going to do? We don't have any food sources, right? So I really think right. it's important. I always tell, like, my clients, at the very least, you need to, like, grow herbs and have some – some form of vegetable growing if you possibly can. If you can't grow it outside, grow it in. I mean, in the city you can do a lot of hydroponics, aquaponics, and grow at least 80% more food than even on land. So there's real ways to wow. get food production happening even in in urban areas. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, definitely. But all of that is part of education. Right, exactly. It's so important. And that's what I was just talking about earlier on in the show is that we just don't know any better. We haven't been taught properly. And that's why it's important to start learning. We're taking back power, personal power of our lives. Right, exactly. So, you know, those are just some of the things that I, I work on on a regular basis. And, you know, it's kind of, it's not really to me work. It's more like a mission, you know. It's just right. a life. It's just a life. It's just a lifestyle. I love that. 
And I think that's what everybody needs to kind of get to is the point where what they do is what they love. And that way mm-hmm. you're not even working today. You're not working another day in your life, right? I don't work you're at just, all. You're just living your passion. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, that's it. I definitely have to um, kind of pick your brain because I know that there's a lot of people that are interested kind of in going vegan and living a more healthy lifestyle by doing that. So are there any mm-hmm. ways that you recommend for people to kind of help them transition over into a more vegan lifestyle? Yes. Um, I think the big issue with people is the way they look at what food is. Right. So in a lot of people's mind, they have this concept of a meal being like a burger and fries and a soda. (laughs) And that's what a meal is to them. But a vegan or even a raw foodist instead will go to um, the grocery store, say there's nothing else in the area, and pick up, you know, a, a, a hand of bananas and a large avocado and a mango, mm-hmm. and that will be their meal. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, a, and a big gallon of water. Same cost right. as the Big Mac and fries. They spent six, seven dollars or whatever. Same price, but you know, it's a lot of it is rethinking what a meal looks like, rethinking what food is. Right. You know, but real can you can you sustain- yeah. and also learning to be satisfied with. You know, I'm just going to eat. Like tonight, I just had this delicious gala apple. I felt I was moving around a lot, and I felt a little hunger, and I was like, I can either heat something up or make a smoothie or eat an apple. And for me, fast food, the fastest thing I could eat and and sustain myself and satisfy myself is just eating a big, it's like a big, delicious apple. And that was good, and it cut the hunger, and I'm still moving. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to sit down or anything. So it's just like rethinking what food is, you know. We, we're in this microwave society where everything is like, I need it now, I need it fast, I need, you know. And right. food, you know, once you start rethinking that that is not even edible, that's not even food to me, the drive through it's not even food. Then it's no longer a choice on my, on my list of things to go for. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I always stress, like, real food. And when I do my detoxes, that's one of the options that I give them. Like, you don't have to use any supplements. You don't have to necessarily do a juice cleanse. But you have to just eat real food. If it's not real food, you can't have it. Yeah, just, just, you know, and a lot of people are so, I won't say people are lazy because I don't think we live in a lazy society for real. I think there's just too much going on. People aren't lazy. They're just really busy. So to say, right. well, you're too lazy to cook, it's not true. They've been out of their house for 10 or 12 hours. Now they've got to go cook a meal. That's not realistic for people. And it has nothing to do with being lazy. It has to do with being right. exhausted. However, you could uh, find the time to make larger quantities and then have stuff ready um, make a, instead of making one serving, that one serving life is just not, even if you're a single individual, that's just not the business. I mean, make a big right. pot of quinoa, stir fry a big pot of veggies, you know, and then, and then have a big avocado sitting there, slice that up, and there's a meal. You know what I mean? You could heat that up real exactly. quick in, in, a, in a pan, already done, five minutes and, and it's hot, and then you cut your avocado throw some lettuce on it or, or slice a cucumber and you have a meal in five minutes, but you cooked that two or three days ago. You know what I mean? So right. it's really not, it's really, it's just um, reorganizing the way you think about food, you know, or if, you know, make a meal like, okay, right now I don't feel like going through all that. I'm just going to blend up um, papaya, avocado, and some berries and maybe throw some protein powder in it or what have you, and that's dinner, you know, and keep it moving okay. and being satisfied with that. And that should be most of the time. The stuff, the fun stuff, the going out to dinner, the cocktails, right. the, the shishi lala, that is the weekend. That's the, that's the, the sometimes. That's not the, the daily exactly. lifestyle. So whatever you do 
some of the time really doesn't matter. It's what you're doing most of the time. So most of the time, this is your lifestyle. And when you want to, like, break off and have your little cake or your little whatever, that is <laughs> – you understand, like, those things, yeah. oh, sometimes I have this and sometimes I have that. That doesn't matter what you do on the sometimes. It's what you do on the regular. So exactly. that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I say the same thing. Like, as long as you're, for the most part, taking care of yourself, your body isn't so overwhelmed that it can't fix little things. Like, if you do have go, co- go and have cocktails with your girlfriends or whatever. So, yeah, definitely. I totally understand. Exactly. So, all right. So, um, you said you've been vegan for uh, the last thirty years. Yep. Have Have you had any challenges? Like, and, and since it's been thirty years, you probably haven't had a challenge recently. But like early on in your journey into veganism, did you have any challenges? Um, challenges. Let me think. I think as that when I was younger, I was more uh-huh. meatless. I was more meatless, which meant, you know, like there's a lot of people who are meatless, but they're not necessarily vegan or plant-based. They just don't eat meat. So instead they'll eat like white pasta and they'll eat um, like the, the soy burgers and, and the TVP right. and all these like highly processed junk foods that are not right. necessarily any more beneficial than eating a uh, drive through So right. that, was, that was an evolution. And, and as I learn about nutrition and learning how to really love green leafy veggies, learn, loving the mm-hmm. taste of spicy, bitter arugula, loving the taste right. of, of things that are like not in the regular palate, and, and, and learning to love those things, learning to get off the sugar and those things, then I became more nutritionally based eating than just, you know, there's vegans and they, their whole fridge is nothing but like box of this, box of that, these kind of right. bars, these kind of packaged can, Worthington, food, hot dog, vegan, you know, so vegan is whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've evolved way over the years in terms of, you know, whole food, fresh, as live as possible. You know, if you're cooking, like, the whole rice thing, I mean, rice and beans mm-hmm. sustain bil- not millions of people, billions of people on the planet, right? And you really right. can't, you really can't because there's a thing in the raw food movement that's very elitist that I'm against because, you know, to eat 100% raw food, organic, you got to be well, well off. You know what I'm saying? So you really can't down the billions of people on the planet that are sustaining themselves on rice and beans. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um, rice I'm not a fan of, though. I don't eat rice anymore. I have eaten rice over the years and plenty beans, but oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't eat um, – much of it, you know what I mean? I'm really trying to be very veggie-based, you know, very, mostly veggies and green leafies, and if I do grains, it's going to be more quinoa, and um, I've done amaranth when I see it, et cetera, et cetera. So. Right. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, when it comes to the rice and the beans and the wheat and the corn, like anything to me that's like – or an, and soy as well. Anything that is mass produced to feed the masses or the herds of people like scares me to no end because I almost feel like it's literally it, it has no no or very little nutrients. It's really just kind of like a filler to keep the majority of people satisfied. Exactly. I think the same way. Yeah. So I think the same well, we way. need to go to um, a really quick commercial break, and we will be back in about two minutes, okay? Do you want to live a happy and healthy barefoot lifestyle? Join Barefoot is Legal Saturdays, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time to learn your rights to live a barefoot lifestyle. 
There are no laws against bare feet in public, and we are here to dispel the myths and empower you to stand up for your rights. Join full-time barefooter and victim's legal advocate Nick Pierce on Freedomizer Radio or the Barefoot is Legal Radio Show Saturdays, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, and check out barefootislegal.org. Second Generation, Mondays at 1 to 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we will be revealing the true science behind vaccines, the harm they cause, the stories of the affected families just like our own, and much, much more. So tune in and get the stories that the big news channels refuse to cover. This day and age, we must protect our families from those sworn to do no harm. We will not ingest the lies any longer. Mothers, fathers, doctors, scientists, journalists, speaking out on behalf of the health of humanity. So, join my mom, your host, Lynette Barron, on Forsaken Generation, Mondays, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, everyone, we are back on the air. Hello, Sky, you there? (laughs) Hi, Sky. Hey there. Hey. Hey. So um, I wanted to ask you kind of like more about your retreat, how they work, um, like um, kind of the length of them, um, a little bit more about kind of like what you would do um, in a day on one of the retreats, what the benefit is, why somebody should attend one of your retreats. Wonderful. So um, the retreats right now are five days. They Come, people fly in on a Wednesday and they leave out on a Monday. Um, the day is usually like wake up. The breakfast is usually always liquid. So it's like a green smoothie or juicing. Then they get uh, take them to yoga class on the beach, come back, chill for a while. Then we'll have a workshop on preparing raw food. Then we eat lunch, a uh, little break. Then we go out on an excursion, either to the rainforest, the river, Old San Juan, Louisa, uh, the beach. Um, And that's pretty much every day. We come back and uh, dinner and then chill time. Sometimes in the evenings we'll have a game or a movie or, you know, a lot of people are detoxing. That's a big thing about when you transition into raw food. People think that, you know, I can just eat this way and keep it moving. But the truth is, after like two days of eating like straight raw food, lots of greens, all the other stuff that they've been eating is processing. So they actually get this super exhaustion thing. And by 8 p.m., they're usually done and they're sleeping. Oh, yeah. Um, Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. So that's pretty much the way it goes. Um, People have stayed with me for from from the five days minimum up to thirty days, um, wow. depending on their their needs, what they you know what their needs are, and I've hosted people who are interested in anything from just the general raw food detox to those people who are healing from um, surgery, uh, people who have diseases like cancer, et cetera, and also um, Plastic surgery, like if you're if someone who went and had like you know a tummy tuck or knows what you know whatever, and they just want to right. get away and and this helps also aid in the healing process by eating clean foods and it's you know relaxing over here and you know if they're exactly. in recovery then yeah, they wouldn't do all the excursions, huh? I, I said they have a stress-free environment that makes a big difference in the recovery process. Right. So, you know, if they if they don't want to do the hiking and stuff, you know, they can opt out of those types of things. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Great, great. Well, so good. So if you could um, give us any kind of like last words of wisdom that you have um, for our, our, our listeners, like 
um, on how to live kind of like a better lifestyle? Oh, wow. Um, I really think that, so we talked a lot about veganism today. And yeah. I really I really think that as beneficial as veganism is to the world and to the individual, I don't think we need to get caught up on the isms and schisms of the diet. In other words, um, I don't want... I don't want to be a preacher of veganism. I want to be a preacher of wellness and good living. You know, if that means drinking coconut water and eating mangoes on the beach, that's more the direction I'm interested in people moving towards than waving the vegan flag. You know what I mean? It it becomes off. It sometimes is very off-putting to um, people who don't eat that way. You know what I mean? And if I'm trying to get you to embrace this type of lifestyle and even to try it temporarily while you jump out of your regular every day, I don't want you to join this cult over here that is, you know, this flag-waving cult. I want you to enjoy life. I want you to enjoy flavors. I want you to enjoy the beauty of it. So that's kind of the direction I call the retreat vibrate higher. It's not about isms and schisms and you got to join this and you got to do it this way and this is the only way. I mean, I've had people come on the retreat who, like, um, they didn't even have to beg me. They just said, can you make a little falafel? Can you cook some quinoa? So if they didn't want 100% raw, I'm okay. I'm flexible. I had one lady who was a paleo diet, and the way I did it was high fruit. So I reduced the fruit, went more fat, more avocado, more low-carb, more green, and I even incorporated some fish for her a couple times for the week she was here. Why? Because I want her to experience what she came to experience, not um, this is the way you have to do it, this is the way it works for everyone. And and that's not the truth. The truth is how can I meet you where you want to be? And that's what I offer, you know? So, yeah, because yeah. everybody. Also, what I wanted to exactly. Also, what I wanted to do, since uh, you've graciously allowed me to be on your show, I wanted to extend a special. I haven't even put this out here yet, but a special yeah. two for one retreat special for someone and a friend to come down together for the price of one person. So, if your guests listening, go to my website. SkyJuice.com. Sky is spelled S-K-A-I. Juice.com. They can see the whole retreat, what it off, you know, what everything is, and there's a package uh, registration at the bottom. It's a two for one, and that will expire um, at the end of the month of January. So they can get registered, and they can come down any time for the next um, six, seven, eight months. I think I have dates from now till August. Beautiful. Okay, good. I'll put that on my Facebook site, too. So why cool. don't you um, go ahead and give us all of um, your contact information. Um, I know you just gave the website, but if there's any more contact information you'd like to give our listeners so they can contact you. Um, the website is really good, skyjuice.com, um, but a big following uh, a big way that I connect with people is on Facebook, which is the Sky Juice page on Facebook, which is Sky as in S K A I Juice, Sky Juice Facebook page. And, you know, like my page and send me messages or just follow, you know, all the stuff I promote. I promote just, you know, a whole bunch of stuff talking about health, wellness, fitness, living abundantly law of attraction, positivity, having fun. I like to put jokes on there, you know. Some people get angry (laughs) because I put stuff and they're like, is she serious? I thought she was all deep. And I put something silly and then they're like, oh, y'all don't like to laugh? So (laughs) whatever, it's all about balance. Exactly. Can't be serious all the time. Good. Exactly. Well, guys, Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you came on and spoke with us, to, well, with me tonight. Um, and hopefully, shoot, maybe I can get um, Oksana to come on this retreat with me. 
Yeah, that would be great. That would yeah. be great. Now, so is there a special code? Go ahead. Is there a special code that they're going to need to use to get this deal from you? Um, I really do need to put a code in, but basically they can just say I'm applying for the two for one, you know, and that Stop. they heard it on your show. Okay, perfect. That sounds great. Well, because I really haven't, so I haven't put it out there yet. So this oh, is going to be beautiful. coming from, from your group. Yep. Beautiful. Wonderful. Good. So, well, thank you so much. And you have a wonderful evening. All righty. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye, Sky. All righty. Peace. All right. That was wonderful. We had another great special guest on tonight. Hopefully you got some good information and hopefully you are interested in going on that retreat. And that's a great deal. So two for one means all you have to do is get airline tickets for you and a friend and pay for one person. So check out um, www.skaijuice.com for that deal. And like she just said, um, put in that it's for the two-for-one special for the retreat. And um, you can get that great deal and get some good detoxing and rest and relaxation in. And I know, especially everyone listening from the East Coast, you're definitely going to need some sunshine because it is snowing pretty bad out there. Anyways, um, I wanted to go ahead and give everyone tonight's homework. So I hadn't really thought too much about the homework, so this is just coming off of the top of my head now. But I think it's a really good idea to um, kind of exactly what Sky was saying, where it's not like you're putting yourself in this bubble or this category that says you're a vegan or you're a vegetarian or you're whatever kind of eating habit they happen to have a new name for today. But... It's all about wellness overall, taking really, really good care of yourself, understanding that your body is the vessel that you're getting around and navigating this world in, and it's really important to take care of it. If you don't want to deal with cancers, if you don't want to deal with dis-ease of the body, if you don't want to not feel good overall, what you need to do is you want to make sure that you're inputting as much good stuff as possible and as little, if at all, the bad stuff, right? So you want to make sure that you're really, really making a conscious, concerted effort to only put in good stuff, right? And even the good stuff, remember, can be bad if you use too much of it or if it's not in moderation. So make sure, A, one of the things I want you to do is start making sure you're drinking more water. You need to drink more good, clean, mineral-rich water. Um, You also want alkaline water. And I'll post on the Facebook page um, this awesome supplement that helps uh, alkalize your water. It's called the Alkalizer. And then I have another one that's called Mega Hydrate. Um, that works really well as well, and that also changes the ORP or the oxidation reduction potential of your water too. So um, I'll post those on the Facebook page, www.facebook.com backslash bodyandsoulawarenessradio.com. So that's your homework. Make sure that you're drinking enough water. That's one. Two, make sure you're drink or you're eating lots and lots of leafy green vegetables. Now, whether you juice them or you eat them in a salad or you blend them up in a smoothie, make sure that you're consuming them and lots of them. And then that way you're going to be getting lots and lots of the nutrients that you need in a healthy way as opposed to making your body work really, 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 really hard and getting a lot less nutrients by eating things like meat and processed foods. Okay, Um, so that's number two. And then number three, I'm going to say you need to eat a rainbow. So you want to eat a variety of foods. You want to eat foods that um, are all different colors because different colors and foods are going to tell you the different um, phytonutrients um, that are in the food. So depending on 
then um, depending on the color that you're eating, it's going to tell you what nutrients those happen to be. So just to kind of give you a little bit of information um, on that. So, okay. So, like I said, depending on what color the food is, that's what um, – um, that's what's going to give you the nutrients. So let's see, like orange vegetables, they're going to have uh, orange and red, they're going to have lots of vitamin C. Um, uh, green vegetables, they're going to have lots of calcium, you're going to have iron. So depending on the different colors, that's what's going to give you what you need. So you need to focus on making sure that you get a variety of different colors into your diet. And I'm not saying that you have to eat the rainbow every single day, but throughout the week you need to be making sure that you're, um, that you're eating, quote, unquote, the rainbow. So you want everything from white to red to green to yellow to purple to blue. Make sure you're eating lots of berries. Berries are really good for you, especially blueberries, raspberries. Those are kind of my favorite. So that's the three things that I want you to um, do for your homework. Make sure you're consuming lots and lots of mineral-rich water. Make sure that you're also consuming lots of green leafy veggies. And then you also want to make sure that you are eating the rainbow. Make sure you're eating lots of different colors of fruits and veggies. So um, I think that's a really good homework for everyone. It's not super hard. It's something that's kind of easy to implement. When you go to the grocery store, just look for different colors. If you kind of get bored with the traditional things, get something different. There's a lot of different things in all the grocery stores. Even if you don't go to a specialty grocery store, like um, a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's or a Global, whatever, you can also go um, to a regular grocery store and they have sections that are like tropical fruit. Like, have you tried a star fruit lately? I don't know. If you haven't tried a star fruit, try a star fruit. So what me and, I, me and um, Kai, my little guy, do is we go to the grocery store and he gets to pick a different kind of fruit every time we go so he gets to experience different fruits, different tastes, different textiles. And then that way, when he grows up, he's going to want to eat all these different fruits and vegetables, and he's not going to look at things like hamburgers and french fries and sweets as sources of food because they're not sources of food for him. It's not what he understands as food. So that's why it's really important to kind of reprogram ourselves and get out of the mindset that get out of the mindset that certain things are food. Like a microwave dinner is not food. Outside of the fact that you're putting microwaves in it, on outside of the fact that it's in a plastic container, outside of the fact that the food in it is probably GMO'd, outside of the fact that there's a whole bunch of sodium in there to make sure that it doesn't go bad. Like, there's so many different, like, negatives to all of the prepackaged foods that it just makes sense to make sure that you're eating good, fresh food. And I don't know about you, but every time I eat something that's fresh, especially, like, just a, a nice raw juice, that, um, like the other day, where'd I go? I went to um, my local juice and vitamin store. It's right here on Main Street. I love it. I can just walk right over there. So good. Maybe I can get somebody from there to come online and talk about, or come on the air and talk about the benefits of juicing. But I love going over there, and right in front of you, they press all of these veggies, and you smell it in the air. It just smells so fragrant and yummy. And they have everything from, like, ginger to mango. Um, I even had garlic added to my drink because um, we were feeling a little bit under the weather in the house, and I always like to get our immune system up high as much as possible when people are sick around us. So juicing is really good, and it's a really good way to get a lot of vitamins and minerals inside of you without having your body go through the digestion process, which is super hard on your body as well. So anyways, I totally recommend juicing, and um, actually one of the best things to do is juice every single morning. 
So what happens is is your body gets woken up with all these vitamins and minerals as opposed to getting jolted awake by coffee or whatever else you happen to drink in the morning. So anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off a little bit early. The little guy is crying in the background, and I want to get to him quickly. But I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's show and got a lot of information. Um, remember to go to our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com backslash body and soul awareness radio. And then if you need to contact me, um, Stephanie at Edensbalance.com. And then you can also check out my website. It's www.edensbalance.com. And there you can check out my blog, um, which I don't always keep up to date as much as I should, but I'm working on doing it a little bit more. It's been a little bit hectic and crazy and hard to get enough time to focus on a blog with my little monster running around. But um, I will be doing those a lot more um, later this year. Then you can also check out my classes. I have a couple different classes um, on wellness and nutrition. I have a month-long detox course that's really amazing that slowly and um, very helpfully guides you through the detox process just to make sure that you're doing it properly, to make sure that you're doing it in a healthy way, but also to make sure that you stay encouraged and, um, and you have all of the assistance that you need to get through a detox because it can be a challenging, challenging process, um, kind of changing and relearning the way that, um, that your body works pretty much, because we've been taught wrong for so long. So I really love doing the detox programs, but I have other classes on there as well, and then I'm constantly working on more classes just to help everyone get as much information as possible, because I think when we're informed, that's the most important thing. And I always go back to the cartoon G.I. Joe that was on in the 80s. Yes, I just um, aged myself, but... At the end of every G.I. Joe cartoon show, they would say, knowing is half the battle. And I really think that is so true because if you know, if you are armed with the right information, you can make better choices and you can have your best life possible, right? Now, I'm not saying you're going to have somebody else's life and I'm not saying you're going to tomorrow be exactly the way that you want to be, but I do know that with time and you putting in effort and intention and consciously making changes in your life, that you can be where you want to be in life. And I think that's so important, and I think everybody deserves it. And sometimes people just need a little bit more help, and that's where coaches like me, um, my co-host, Oksana, and even um, especially my guest, um, Sky Juice that was just on earlier today. So wherever you decide to get help from, if you need help on your fitness or wellness journey, make sure that you contact someone that is passionate about helping and getting you to where you need to be, not where we want you to be or where society thinks you should be, okay? So I hope everybody has um, a wonderful evening. Remember, do your homework, drink more water, eat more green leafy veggies, and taste the rainbow. Um, So have a wonderful evening and make sure that you listen to us next week, um, um, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on freedomizerradio.com.